Welcome to the Expansionist Podcast with Shelley Shepard and Heather Drake. In each episode, we dive deep into conversations that challenge conventional thinking, amplify diverse voices, and foster a community grounded in wisdom, spirit, and love. All right, I'll start. Thank you so much for being here for this this amazing topic that we're about to dive into. I'm very interested in this conversation, and I promise you that this will not be the last time that we talk about this or talk around this or read about this or enter carefully into and also joyfully. And so this is a topic Mm. that thrills me, largely because Mm -hmm. I don't have this conversation as often as I'd like to. And um, I'm excited to share some of what I've learned, what we've learned, and how we are engaging the beauty of the feminine divine in our lives and mm-hmm. in what we are sharing and in how we're learning and in how the Holy Spirit is showing up and um, expanding our, not just yes. our vocabulary, but our understanding, our intuition and our attunement. So good stuff. Mm-hmm. Prayerfully. Yeah. I think I've, I think I've always been, been motivated by the feminine spirit of God I didn't always know what to call her, but I think I've always been motivated by her. Um, as I look back at, at different places in my life and different seasons, I, I can see her work, right? But I think growing up in in um, a mainline church, um, what we would call an evangelical church as well, um, there wasn't always places for for her language, right? For the she language, for the feminine spirit of God language. Um, but I was I was fortunate enough to um, be part of a, a congregation early on that allowed women to speak or teach or lead or pray out loud or preach, speak, whatever they needed to do. So it wasn't it wasn't hard for me to make the leap. Um, that somehow in in the divine order, there was this feminine spirit of God as well, and not just uh, a masculine spirit of God. How about for you? Was was that the case for you? It or wasn't no? in in the in the very beginning of um, my you know introduction to the the faith that I had been gifted, you know, through what my family had taught me, what the church had taught me, what the culture had taught me. Um, I missed the voices that were already present. I just wasn't like tuned into them or taught how to pay attention to them. Um, as a very young child, memorized a lot of the Psalms, a lot of the Proverbs, but missed the fact mm. that wisdom is always recognized as the feminine. Wisdom is calling out in the street, and we believe Jesus to be wisdom right. manifest, and we believe spirit to mm-hmm. be wisdom all-encompassing. And so to agree to those things yet miss the fact that wisdom has, since the very beginning that we have this literature, been given a feminine voice. And I was thinking about why do we need it to have a feminine voice? Why can't we just just gloss over it like Mm -hmm. we've been doing for so long. But I think that in our present state of the world where brokenheartedness is so prevalent, where people are in Mm. need of the tenderness of God, the compassion of spirit. I don't know if we've spent enough time cultivating um, to be able to hear this voice. And you and I um, both appreciate uh, Lori Beth's work. And I was just thinking about, um, we did uh, an event where Lori Beth was teaching how to hear the voice above the noise. And Mm -hmm. I think that Mm -hmm. this is the same kind of thing, like how to hear the voice of the feminine divine above the clamor of all the other voices that have been around us. And part of that is through walking with someone who has heard it and said, there, that sound there, that is the voice. Mm. of love. That is the voice that calls to us um, from, uh, you know, this, the the upper chamber. This is the voice that calls to our spirit, mm-hmm. that woos mm-hmm. us. This is the voice of compassion and comfort. This is the voice that is not in any way judgmental, is in no way even in any point harsh, but just the tenderness of God. And I think mm. I, I, I listen to the spirit 
through what the apostle even said when he said that gentleness is a fruit or an evidence of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And in this gentle, yes. tender, yet not soft, I don't want to use the word soft, I want to use the word gentle and mm. tender voice, I think so much of our souls need to hear this. And we sometimes miss the music of the universe because we haven't been taught mm -hmm. how to hear the voice of the feminine divine. Yeah. And I, I, I appreciate what you're saying about, about this, um, you know, our growing up years, because the, the task um, that was before uh, many people that led us, those that trained us or developed our spirituality or, you know, our understanding of, of the faith were also shaped and uh, fashioned by a generation previous to them. And I, I think you have to go, I think we have to go, you know, really, really far back in, in church history and Christian history to understand how, how the feminine voice of God was, um, you know, kept silent, why women were kept silent. Um, what is it about the feminine spirit? If, if she were released in the world, you know, full force, how hopeful. What, would it, what would it look what like? What a hopeful thought. Yeah. What a hopeful thought. Yeah. And yes. one of the things that is important to me in why we would have this conversation is firstly because you and I both honor the tradition that we grew up in that first handed us our faith. Mm. And, but what we have sure. recognized is the call is to expand on that tradition, it, to go right. past what we have learned, and even go into this place of unlearning that Jesus called us to. Mm. This is the repentant life. This looks like having a higher thought that Jesus called us to. And this higher thought includes all of the manifest presence of God and looking and being attuned to the manifest presence in the feminine, in the divine feminine mm -hmm. in particular, in listening to the small, still voice of God that reassures us, that gives us directions, that comforts us, that is with us always. And... Mm learning to hear her voice, to trust that voice, and to, I think, to give attention to it to the world, to help us as we navigate our current circumstances, our current world, and to be able to say, yes, there is love, and love is still speaking, mm -hmm. and love sounds mm -hmm. like the feminine divine. Love sounds mm -hmm. like tenderness. Love sounds like everybody come to the table. Love sounds like Jesus who said that God is like a woman who has lost a coin and she mm -hmm, gathers up mm -hmm. her skirts and lays flat on her stomach on the floor and looks between the slats on the floor, looks under the bed, looks in the cabinet tree, looks in drawers to find this lost coin. And this right. God who looks like a woman who searches the high and the low for <laughs> things. I, I love the, the imagery in that particular uh, scripture where it says it's the coin that's lost because the coin doesn't lose itself. Sheep yeah. wander, sons leave, but the coin, yes. <laughs> that, that, that had, that, that's not the coin's fault. <laughs> and, and so I think very often in places, even in myself where I need God to come for me, or I need to hear the spirit of God's um, comfort or direction. Mm -hmm. I need to hear the voices of the feminine that have honored the word of the Lord. I, in this season that we're in, um, we're just finishing up Advent and we're coming into, or Christmas time coming into Epiphany. And there's so many voices of women in the scriptures, in the story of Jesus, in the story that God mm -hmm. is telling us mm -hmm. that love is coming and that the story is even looking differently than anybody even recognized. Yeah. So what does it look like to have our mm -hmm. ears healed? What does it look like to have our eyes healed so that we can hear and that we can live differently. I think that's a great question, Heather, as well. Is what does it look like to have our eyes healed and our ears healed? Um, there was a season in my life where um, it, it was hard for me to listen to the male instruction um, week after week in a church, um, preaching or teaching. 
And I got to a point where I either just, I had to leave the church or I had to find the feminine voice somewhere in the city. Who was, where was the feminine voice uh, being allowed to, uh, to be released? And, and so when you bring up the healing of our ears and, um, you know, the healing that maybe this, this place of expansionist that, that we're here to talk about and, and to share is that in order to hear, in order to heal our ears, sometimes we have to hear it differently than we've always heard it. Sometimes we have to get in a context where um, the spirit can move us in a way um, that we've never been moved before. Mm. And so I, I, I had this choice. I could stay, you know, listening, which, which wasn't a good option for me. Um, or I could just leave the church altogether and say, okay, this is not, this is not for me anymore. And, you know, go off and, and find something else to, to connect to spiritually. Or, um, I, I felt the spirit of God saying to me, there's, there's a way to hear my voice. There's a way to know me. Um, and, and I want you to keep searching. I want you to keep looking and listening and finding that voice. And so thank goodness there were uh, female pastors in the city. And thank you for being a female pastor as well. Um, that I, I was allowed to sit under um, and hear from them and their perspective of the scripture, their perspective of the text, right? It wasn't that they were necessarily preaching a different gospel. It's that they had aligned and attuned to the feminine spirit of God within them. And that began to make all the difference for me um, in, in my faith and my spiritual walk. And so how do we, how do our ears and eyes um, become healed? And I think it's through individuals like yourself who uh, are preaching in a pulpit uh, on a platform. They have an audience every week and an opportunity to say to all those that are there, male and female, that there's a piece of God that we might not have given enough time to understand. And that's why I think this podcast, the Expansionist Podcast, is so important. Is It gives us this opportunity to take what we have learned about spirit, uh, about wisdom and love, and, and, and make it reach and stretch towards healing other individuals that might be ready to leave the church, might, you know, they can't really listen to another male preacher, um, you know, whatever their case may be. Um, but for me, that was a very real time. And, and thank goodness that, um, you know, I just stayed with it. I stayed with it until I could find the feminine spirit of God. And um, and I haven't really looked back since. Um, it's been quite the journey. And so I'm excited that we're talking about that today. A couple of things as you're speaking. I'm thinking of the last miracle that Jesus does is heal mm. someone's ear <laughs> that was damaged by someone who was a follower yeah. of Jesus, trying to protect yes. Jesus, lops off someone's ear. <laughs> and yeah. I'm wondering how many of us have, by people who really are intent on protecting Jesus or protecting God, mm. have done damage mm -hmm. to the way that we hear. <laughs> and yes. I just see the compassion of Jesus who tells Peter, put away your sword and yes. gently heals this man. And I'm hoping that in that tenderness and in our looking to Jesus, that we find his gentle healing that says, we may mm. have had someone who was trying to defend or protect the God that mm. they knew. And, and, it, and sure. in the way that they did that, it, 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 it caused us to hear differently. <laughs> and so I, what I'm mm -hmm. asking is that perhaps the spirit is, you know, coming in this place to, to heal our ears so that we can hear the true things, because I'm confident no matter, I mean, I don't know how old this person was, but at some point we lose some hearing. I know that when Jesus restored this person's <laughs> hearing, it was the best hearing that he's ever had. And, you know, and I know Jesus didn't like smack it back on there. I could just feel that pain in that person mm. and then feeling that tender 
healing of your hearing is restored and there's a tenderness there. And even then Jesus's mm-hmm. tenderness toward Peter to just put it away, <laughs> put it yeah. away. And I think sometimes for us, that's the same thing. The things that we have used to damage ourselves or damage others, sometimes those things need to be put away. And I think that's what Jesus is calling us to as the church, as the bride of Christ, as people who are whole and and listening for something more, put away the sword and Mm -hmm. listen to the voice that is calling us and wooing us into this realm of love, this kingdom of love that Jesus is saying, you know, you're looking everywhere for the kingdom and it's within you. And so how do we hear within us? Yes. And, and, and talk to me a little bit about Jesus left, right? Jesus ascended. Jesus is, has moved on to another realm. And Jesus invites spirit to come. And Jesus right? gifts spirit. That is the gift of Jesus yeah. as before he ascends. He says, I'm, I'm leaving, but I'm not leaving you without. In fact, it's better for mm-hmm. you that I go away because the spirit will be with you now. So... There is a, you know, this is not a pinch hitter. This is, this is yes. the full gift of God's manifest presence with us. We want to pause and take a moment and let you know how glad we are that you've joined us. If you're enjoying this podcast, consider sharing it with a friend. And if you found the conversation intriguing and want to know more about what we're learning or how you can join our online community, visit our website at expansionistheology.com. So if that if that is the full gift and Jesus was the introduction to that full gift, then and you and I believe that the spirit is is the feminine divine spirit of God. Like God literally says through Jesus, I'm going to give you this comforter, this entity, this spirit, this movement, this breath uh, out of my own being. And I want you to move in this world in a particular way, why are we, why are we not seeing that? Why are we somehow still focused on God and Jesus? I I don't know necessarily that I can give answer to that only from my own experience, because sometimes I don't have the confidence to maybe go out of things that are other than what have been told to me or what is written in something that I can find. And so being able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, to have the opportunity to act on it, to respond to it, to engage that spirit, and then say, what is the end result? What is the fruit of my engagement with this spirit? Is it love? Is it peace? Is it joy? Is it allowing me to be a better lover of the world, of my family, of my neighbors? Then when it does, that I can ask um, I can, I can ask with confidence to hear the voice of God. And sometimes when we say the voice of God, people often feel like that voice may come from the outside, may come like a hearing, like with our ears outside of us. But very often it comes from that very deep place within us where God, where love dwells, where that spark happened. Um, I was just thinking while you were talking, um, I, I, for me, some of the things weren't highlighted as a, a young person or as a child. And the things that were highlighted may have overshadowed or misconstrued the narrative I have about women mm-hmm. in the Gospels in the First Testament and also in the Second Testament. But I was thinking about Psalm 68 in verse 11 when it talks about the Lord announces his word. And where we were just in the season of Advent and this idea of the word being made flesh and dwelling with us. And this word that comes, this Logos word. But then the next part of Psalm 68, 11 says, the Lord announces the word and the women who proclaim it are a mighty throng. And so this idea mm-hmm. that even before, you know, like this is not a new thing that we're doing. This is not like, you know, no. 2023 and now we're looks, listening for the divine feminine. Yeah. This understanding that if in my feminine heart and in, in my uniquely feminine spirit, if I understand that I am also made in the image of God and not just mm-hmm. my brother, husband, son, but that each of us bear this and this idea of a very 
egalitarian type of understanding where everybody, everybody has the same value, equality, belovedness. And that calls mm-hmm. me to listen for another voice or to learn another way of hearing. Yeah. I've often thought that, um, you know, some of those same, um, same things that you just mentioned that, you know, maybe, maybe it was our training, maybe it was our upbringing that, that kept um, the feminine at bay, or maybe it was patriarchy. Maybe there's things that we can continue to point to that, that, that we tell ourselves, um, well, we really don't understand the feminine divine because of, you know, all these factors and nobody really preaches about it or teaches on it. And so, and so consequently here, here you and I are <laughs> trying to bring, to bring our thoughts about, uh, you know, the spirit's impression, uh, upon, our, upon ourselves. Um, and yet at the same time, I, I do believe that there, that this, that there is a movement of the spirit. Um, you know, even if, even in, in a Trinitarian theology where it's God, the father, God, the son, and God, the Holy spirit, the Holy spirit is, is the movement of those two lessons, the God lesson and the Jesus lesson. Yeah. And, um, and, and yet at the same time, if this feminine spirit of God is not unleashed, if it's, if it's quenched or if it's watered down or if it's placed in a margin or, you know, under a table, you know, where it, it, it's not freely given or freely talked about or freely received, then then I think we find ourselves, Heather, in these in these spaces where we don't understand the movement of the spirit. We don't understand that the feminine spirit of God is within reach. And when you say things like, you know, we don't understand the movement of the spirit or what the spirit is doing or up to, I often wonder if we even understand that to be an invitation when we see the spirit mm-hmm. moving or when we sense the spirit's um, motion uh, brooding over chaos, it's an invitation to co-create. It's an invitation mm-hmm. to bring the kingdom of love here on earth, even as it is in heaven, as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. But when we say something like approaching the feminine divine, I mean, even listening to that, somebody might say, well, what would that even sound like? And to me, it sounds like... Um, It sounds like Mary who said, let it be unto me according to your word. Mm -hmm. It also sounds like Mary when she said, hey, the proud, they're going to be brought down. And those that are mighty, they're going to be brought down. And the lowly Mm -hmm. and those who don't have power, they're going to be raised up. And it sounds like Elizabeth who said, you know, just when she is in the presence of Mary, she senses the presence of the Holy Spirit so much. It senses the presence of Jesus so much that she says, you know, you're the mother of my Lord. And yes. she, before he's even manifest, she does this. So to mm-hmm, me, that's mm-hmm. what the feminine divine sounds like. These people who are able yes. to, these women in particular who, and not just those two. I right. mean, then we go to Mary Magdalene, which you and I both have, you know, mm-hmm. so much mm-hmm. um, respect and, and admiration for in her apostleship. But she shows us this, the feminine divine looks like washing his feet with your tears and anointing Mm-hmm. when no one else can understand why this is so important or the extravagance of this. Mm-hmm. To me, mm-hmm. yes. the invitation is that spirit would lead us into an ascended place where we can understand that our, I think from the very beginning, if we go back to Eden, we were invited into divine fellowship, into the fellowship, the dance of mm-hmm. father, spirit, and son, and and all of creation that is a, a part of this. And The invitation I think that Jesus offered us is to come up higher, think differently, change the way that you're thinking about Mm -hmm. that, maybe unlearn things that seemed harsh or ill-fitting, and come to learn these Mm -hmm. unforced rhythms of grace. Come and and learn how to live freely and lightly and how to live as Jesus did as he paid attention to the women in his life who taught him. Mm -hmm. As Mm -hmm. we listen to the voice of the Spirit that comes to us. And it's not a different spirit. It's the same spirit, the mm. spirit of God. We're, we're, again, when we're talking about the divine feminine, this is not different than the spirit of God, mm. but it is a attribute or a, um, 
uh, a particular tone, a sound from the feminine that gives us a whole mm. picture of God, a whole sound of God when we listen to mm. the masculine and the feminine. And, and, and I think that's the hunger. And I think that's the desire um, in many ways is to, is to hear that as, as women who have grown up in churches where it is seldom heard um, or seldom invited to, um, to be an active movement in our, in our own personhood, that there's, that there's a way to identify with God, the feminine, the feminine side of God, because obviously God created the feminine and the masculine. And, and so there's something, there's something that's been missing um, and, and I think as you and I kind of excavate and uh, interrogate um, the history that, that we have had in, you know, in our own lives, but also in the present moment, what God is uh, stirring in us, what Jesus is inviting us into, what spirit is um, revealing through, to use your word, through rituals or through practices or ways of inviting the feminine spirit of God to, to join us on a journey that maybe has been absent for many of us, for many people, particularly women. I appreciate what you are reminding me of or, or drawing my thoughts toward, because one of the ways that we can practice the feminine voice and listening for the feminine divine is to look for tenderness just be aware of tenderness in all kinds of places. And, and by that, I mean things like sometimes a breeze that blows is so tender. You can just, mm. it's so gentle and tender in those kind of ways. I mean, there's other times when your hair is all uh, askew from the breeze. And it's like, that's not tender. But I mean, those tender places, even in nature, where we find a, a, a place to put our foot down that is so soft. The grass is so mm. comforting and Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, attending to uh, even the minuscule things in nature where we find tenderness of a, a little bird or, um, and there's so much strength that, I mean, all birds and all nature can tell us about God, but in these tender places, looking for the feminine, listening for a softer mm -hmm. voice, listening for mm -hmm. the kindness of God. Uh, yes. revealed to us through Jesus and listening to mm -hmm. the voice of Jesus mm -hmm. who does not condemn the voice of Jesus who shows us that, you know, this voice of love, this voice of committed love, this voice of wholeness and holiness. Sometimes when we use those words, they have been um, weaponized against certain people and certain people groups. And so I think it's so essential that we hear the voice of the feminine God who calls us home to herself. In fact, Jesus, when he's mm -hmm. looking over the people, says, I long to gather you like a hen gathers chicks. <laughs> mm -hmm. Please just mm -hmm. come here, here to this place in me. Yeah. And yes. this, yes. It, sometimes I look at the world and, and you know read the news on my cell phone and I'm going, Jesus, please come and gather us, gather us from all our places mm -hmm. of separateness, mm -hmm. gather us from all our places of division and gather us to your chest yes. <laughs> where mm -hmm. we can hear mm -hmm. your heartbeat, where we can hear your voice. And I think that we learn that often by being with other women who can tell us things like, do you hear that sound? That's the feminine divine. The sound mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is beloved, the sound that calls us by our true name, the sound that yeah. while we are asleep and in that waking place, when we find our place of home almost in those places, mm -hmm. the voice of love calls to us from the feminine divine and calls us back to ourselves, calls us back to, you know, our oneness with God and with all people. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. I love the words and um, the images that you're crafting and creating here for us, you know, to pay attention to the tender, to pay attention to the love, to pay attention to what spirit is, is moving in our individual heart and lives um, that we have maybe not paid attention to before. Um, I, I think, you know, the, 
the imagery that you've shared, um, you know, requires stillness, requires us to um, solitude, you know, and maybe, um, and maybe that's how the feminine works the best. I, I'm not sure. Um, I have seen a mighty rushing wind of spirit. Um, and I've also seen and experienced a still small voice. And so I'm not trying to like put spirit in a box, like it's just this way or that way. But I, I feel like the, the, the tender place that you're describing is more likely than not what spirit invites us to. I think that's one of the clear practices, the clear way is just consenting to presence, right? Consenting to spirit, being in that, um, in, in the dark, in the quiet, just sitting with this invitation. Um, and sometimes nothing happens. Maybe nothing is, nothing is shared, but it's the invitation to consent to, I want to know, I want to learn. I want to be in this moment with, with spirit, with God, with what, with what, um, with how this can impact my faith and how this impacts my life and then the lives of how that ripples out, uh, from, from you and from me, I think is, is, is beautiful imagery. So thank you for, for sharing that. I'm also reminded of a, a really useful way to start listening for the voice of God that is gentle and that is tender and that is uniquely feminine is going back and reading the text, um, First Testament and Second Testament, and paying attention to the women, paying attention mm. to the fact that Hagar, yes. who is this, I mean, I love her for many, many reasons. My, um, what, what I feel like is I understand often as a, as a mother, there are things that I would think are like the worst things that could happen to a mother to be put out and not mm. be able to provide for a child. And yet yes. in that place, and this is the very beginning of the story, um, in that place, she names God. And I love that we serve a God, that there is not just a God that you and I have created, but the God who is love has been named first by a woman and mm. is and so it's those kind of little things. If you look at those threads, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, all yes. we can we can talk throughout the entire First Testament, but even in the Second Testament here, where we, we're talking about the woman who asks at the well and Jesus responds, the woman mm. who asks for the child to be healed, the 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 mother yes. of James. I'm I'm was thinking the other day how I'm sure that she she's mentioned so many times in the scripture. And yet we only refer to her as this one act of mothering that she did mm -hmm. giving birth to this child, but she's everywhere yes. that the apostles are. And so she's a devoted mm -hmm. apostle, present in all these places. Maybe she has a better memory even than some of the men of mm -hmm. what Jesus said and what those things are. And and still she's just the mother of James, you know? And I'm sure James yes. is hot yes. stuff, you know, like I, I want to be known because yeah. I'm the mother of some other people. But this idea is that if we pay attention to these women who are in the story, listen to how they interact, listen to how Jesus interacts with them, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. it may mm -hmm. give us uh, like a tuning fork so that we can go, yes. aha, I hear that mm -hmm. voice. Mm -hmm. And I realize these are the voices of women, but these are the voices of women who are speaking to the divine and then hearing the echo of themselves, hearing the echo, yeah. this long echo of gentleness, of tenderness, of kindness, of the feminine divine mm -hmm. that woos us into wisdom. And for you and I, wisdom is really important. And I think it grounds us yes. in the wisdom in being able to hear the feminine. It was our joy to have you listen to our conversation today. If you would like further information or for more content, visit us at expansionisttheology.com.